Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome to a new video. We really had good weeks of windsurfing. I am pretty impressed by the consistency of, uh, of this island. The Canary Islands in general this summer have been pretty windy and so Again, it was a good plan to come here in July and score all the conditions that this island delivers. So yeah, talking about that, as I said in my last video, this time I would like to explain to you more about the different spots. Because yes, this island is pretty special. It gives way different conditions, pretty complete conditions in the summer, I mean. Let's start from Puerto Lajas, which is a little village just a few kilometers up north of Puerto Rosario, which is the capital of uh, Fuerteventura. Puerto Lajas delivers some pretty nice wave riding conditions. It's, let's say it's a mushy wave. It especially works well when the swell is pretty big in the north. Um, it works both with north and northeast wind. Usually the best uh, time uh, over there is in the morning, early in the morning or late in the, in the afternoon, almost evening, because the wind gets more offshore, it turns a bit more from, from land, while during the day it can be pretty onshore, especially when it's northeast. But uh, on north wind days, it can be good the whole day. So Puerto La has a really good option. I went there just a few times, probably once uh, during this trip. Uh, because the burro was always too good, but um, yes, I went to Puerto Lajas. It's a mushy wave, as I said, not too powerful, but it has a few little sections. It's nice, it's fun, it's easy, and so it's a perfect spot where, you know, just go relax in the water, have a good time, work on your timing, on your rails, and on the whole ride with more calm, instead of like other spots like a burro, which is, everything is quite faster. So yeah, Puerto Lajas is still a really good spot. First one down there. Then moving up, we have the uh, fantastic, I would say, fantastic El Burro, which has been the spot for these weeks. El Burro uh, usually works from the afternoon all the way to the evening. Uh, some days with strong wind, it can work from the morning. I actually got it one morning and it was epic. So yeah, you can get it for the whole day on, on, good, on good conditions and good days. El Burro works with north wind. That's the rule. Like north wind is the wind. You can see it on Winguru when the arrows are kind of north northwest, then it's an El Burro day. If it's northeast, there might be even no wind at all. Even if it's strong northeast, no wind at all because it's covered from Lanzarote. Or it might be onshore and so it's really not the case to go there. But yes, El Burro, incredible, side, side offshore. I got some pretty offshore days too. The wave it's powerful, especially this first section, it has this bowl that it's not easy to hit because there isn't much space to get speed and, uh, and hit it, but when you hit it, oh, it's a nice feeling. So sometimes, as I said, there's this first bowl, nice section, and then you have a little wall where you can do a big turn. And then if you're lucky enough, if you go the right way, you have a second section down there. And so boom, you can put another aerial. It's a, it's a really, really fun wave. I felt, I felt in a really high quality, uh, high quality spot. On the good days, the intensity, the consistency of the waves was incredible. Every run out, I could get away get back in, ride it, and bam, bam, bam. There are obviously some rocks, some uh, lava rocks, volcano rocks, but sincerely, I lost the gear a few times. I had some pretty decent crashes. 
and I was pretty deep at times, but I never really ended up on the rocks, especially on the medium big days. The current is so strong that usually you just you just get brought by the current into the bay, and so you're safe. So no big uh, no big worries. The conditions remain pretty similar throughout the day, but it can actually change with the tide. I think the best tide is low tide going up. Yeah, absolutely fun, absolutely high quality wave, good level in the water. The, the place itself is amazing. It's just, it's a, it's a natural park, whole dunes, sand. It's amazing. The place, it's amazing the spot. I was really impressed. I think I was lucky with some big swells. So obviously that makes it better and more impressive. But overall, we got one, two, two and a half, three meters wave almost every session that we sail there so i believe that's really consistent considering that we are in europe in summer Then on the north shore there is Punta Blanca. So after Ma uh, driving from Coralejo to El Cotillo through the whole north shore, past Mahanicho there is Punta Blanca. So Punta Blanca is a starboard tack spot. I was I'm sorry I didn't say it. The other two spots were port tack, obviously, as, as you could see from the images. Punta Blanca is completely different. We go from side, side off, riding, port tack, we go to side on shore, slash on shore, starboard tack, jumping mainly. That's Punta Blanca. Punta Blanca works with northeast and only northeast. With north it can get really light and super onshore. So you want to go there with a strong northeast forecast. Waves can be pretty big. It can be a fantastic jumping playground. I got it one day on 4-4 full power and it was absolutely really fun like kind of a pozo style not that windy but plenty of ramps sometimes with high tide there is even too much water and so it's kind of hard to pass all the all the white waters but amazing and if you're good enough if you can find the right sections you can also get some de really decent turns and and rides you know because the wave starts from down there and you can have a bottom top and then play with it backside and then attack again in the in the, in the front side it's uh, it's fun it's fun both for riding and jumping especially if it's pretty windy usually you sail with kind of big sails over there so it's not really an easy spot it's pretty physical side on shore medium light wind it's pretty physical but when it gets strong it's really really fun big ramps high speed, space in between the waves, uh, you can go really high. Obviously my starboard tack jumping skills aren't that good. I haven't been training them that much in all these years because when I was in Maui, I was focused on riding at Okipa and the, the only other place where I could jump starboard tack was Oregon and I've been there only for like two weeks just to compete. <laughs> so yeah, I could only do like back loops and some stall forwards. I think the is the perfect spot to train and improve those conditions. Depending on the tide, you have to launch from different places. So if it's high tide, you can launch from the little beach, uh, which is uh, obviously pretty comfortable. But when it's low tide, lo the tide changes so much that you gotta actually walk all the way to the point and get in from the rocks, which it's not that nice, but if you understand where to go, uh, it can be it can be okay. You just gotta pay a little little bit of attention. But uh, yeah, this, the spot also changes a lot with the tide, obviously, because the water is moving a lot, so the waves can be different. I would say that also there, from low tide going up, is really good. Or let's say mid tide to mid tide is really good usually, especially if, if it's going in high tide.
Last part, it's El Cotillo, which uh, on the west coast, northwest uh, part of the island. Sincerely, I never sailed there, so I can't really tell you how it is. I heard a lot about this spot. It's kind of a big beach break that sometimes can leave space for a few turns, but I've never really seen it working. Every time I passed by, it didn't look that inviting. So, <laughs> so I never sailed there, but I know that's an option. Uh, again, with uh, northeast wind, should be the right wind. But yeah, so these are the four spots. As I said, plenty of different conditions really complete i would say really really fun the other thing about fuerteventura i feel like this island is really really nice like it's it's a cute island you know what i mean like uh the parque natural of el burro with all those sand dunes it's amazing and then corralejo is a really nice place you know plenty of restaurants also vegan restaurants i found both for breakfast lunch and dinner which is quite impressive and then all the north shore it's so wild it's uh it's, uh, it's really nice to drive uh, through the whole North Shore on the dirt road and see so many different waves and spots, especially in winter. There are, there are a lot of amazing spots going off on the, on the North Shore, not in summer. In summer, it's almost uh, only Punta Blanca. I had a lot of hikes. I went to El Barranco Encantado. I feel like being in the middle of the desert. It was an old river. And then I've been to this volcano in Lajares, which is really nice and impressive. So much energy, so much strength from nature. Really nice activities to do when it's not windy. And finally, uh, probably the best hike, the best adventure was going to Cofete, which is on the complete southwest of the island. I wasn't the lucky because I got it pretty cloudy, but still. The landscape, in general, the, the, the landscapes and the place itself was absolutely stunning. I love uh, seeing those places and now with the drone I just have so much fun filming and getting some nice shots because I really love seeing nice natural places and with the drone you just get this amazing point of view perspective which I love to see and I love to share. I think it's pretty emotional. Overall, a great island. A great stay. I'm really impressed with this month here, almost a month here. I sailed a lot. I sailed fun conditions. I sailed the different conditions. I had different things to do, nice bars, good food, vegan food, good, good places where to shop food. I got local organic food. So the best, you know, the best food to recover fast and feel fit. Yeah, also some hikes when there was no wind, when there was no wind and overall it just feels good. There is a lot of variety, little towns. I will for sure be back. I'm happy that I rediscovered the Fuerteventura. I will be for sure back. Hopefully, maybe also in winter with some big swells. I know La Caleta can be epic, Bristol, Mahanicho. So yeah, plenty of opportunities. And I hope you enjoyed this spot guide together with the action. Let me know in the comments, how was it? And please remember to like the video if you liked it, that helps me grow. So yes, help me with that please. Share it with friends, subscribe if you haven't subscribed so you're gonna see my next videos. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe see you here next time, next summer, who knows. <laughs> Alright everybody, have a great day. See you at the next video pretty soon. Ciao. <laughs>